Is Iron Man getting a rework? Will Scopely remain tone deaf to the community or will we update the daily challenges for the level 90 cap increase? We also got some workarounds for the lagginess on blue stacks and we got some recommendations for Dark Dimension and the rest of your mailbag questions because it is Monday, yes. So find that like button and let's go smash it. Alley flying. Ah yes, happy Monday Valley Club. I am Valley Flying. Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. And if you are already subscribed, welcome back. We are talking all about Marvel Strike Force level cap increases tone deaf community response we got some dark dimension uh, recommendations and the rest of your mailbag questions because it is monday we do this every week and i want to thank every each and every one of you that left a question for this video on discord and if you want to get your question potentially answered in a future mailbag video make sure you are a member of discord and go leave your questions in the mailbag but the first thing i want to discuss is iron man is he getting a rework that was a big question on the stream this morning and a lot of that was because of the new animation that these characters got so if we go in and look at iron man in the game he's just standing there right now but if we wait a little while there it is look at that look at his phaser repulsors or whatever they're called all that stuff he got a rework to his animations his his uh what is this loading screen animation or not, not the loading screen but the character screen animation here does this mean that he's getting a rework because a few other characters got an animation updated the first that uh noticed was spider-man now with this costume, he still does nothing. He does nothing at all. But if we take the costume off and go back to the original Peter Parker uh, costume there, oh, wrong button there. But if we go back to the original Peter Parker costume here, equip that and go back to the character screen, we see eventually he will do some new, oh, look at the spider sense. Oh, and he is upside down just like, I think is a spider punk that did that or is a scarlet spider, one of them that does that. So he got a rework to his animations. We also have a rework to the animations of Luke Cage, not just standing here all mad with his hands crossed, but yeah shrugging his shoulders and punching his fist. The other character that uh, we noticed this morning that got a rework to his animations is Captain Sam. Just standing there, looks pretty good. Not just standing there like a year one character, but yes, with the salute. And if we look at the characters that we discussed that had that reworked animation, Captain Sam, very good character, relevant in today's game. Spider-Man is an important part of that Web Warrior team, so is relevant in today's game. Luke Cage is a part of that dirty Heroes Fry Heart team, but the only one that stands out, and I guess it's because he's an iconic character, is Iron Man. But does this mean that he potentially is getting a rework? All these characters have some relevance. The only one that's irrelevant is Iron Man. And unfortunately for Iron Man fans, he was pretty irrelevant from day one. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that means he's getting a rework. Maybe that's a new tech team coming. There was a rework, there was a rumor of Hulkbuster, Iron Man getting a rework. Is this gonna happen? Let me know your thoughts as we go to the mailbag questions, guys. We've got a lot of them, a lot of different just, uh, topics to discuss. Boom, all right, first one. Nobody tells Valley what to read on YouTube. I guess I missed the original message. I'm wondering what this message actually said here. All right, I saw data mine that the unlimited X-Men are needed to unlock Apocalypse. This is true, yeah, unfortunately, it's not just the data mine anymore. After that data mine was done, a day later, they, that in-game message went live and it looks like Apocalypse is gonna be unlocked with all four horsemen. We know two of them right now, Morgan LeFan Rogue. We don't know the other two and the horsemen's teams, which are the Unlimited X-Men for Rogue, the Dark Cold team for Morgan LeFay, and whoever these new two teams for the for the for the scourge characters are they are going to be unlocked for apocalypse so uh gonna need that if so i think i may need to quit msf i think it's really messed up that scopely wants to force us to investing on a garbage team yeah and uh, they they wanted to make it not a garbage team as evidenced by the update notes as we saw the unlimited x-men they got some stat boosts i still don't know if they're worth purchasing or are going to be viable outside of any mode outside of crucible they're a tough crucible team but do they give a lot any value to any team outside of that maybe for this ace of rays gambit trash event that's going on but yeah not uh not not uh not used outside of that so that's it that's it all right next question 
Watch it be for, or not really a question, kind of a response to this next one. Watch it be Dark Dimension 6 with Dark Cold Nodes, Ultimate X-Men Nodes, and section for the next two teams. And this is a Four Horsemen instead of Global, City, Cosmic, Open, and Lego. Yeah, uh, it, it could be. And, you know, a lot of times when they increase the level cap, it usually means a new Dark Dimension is coming. We got level cap 90, a lot sooner than I thought. Does this mean Dark Dimension 6 is coming? I know I just unlocked the Baby Dormammu. I don't have a, I don't have a full Dormammu yet. But, yeah, this should be very, very quick if they're adding another Legendary right now. All right. Or another Dark Dimension right now, especially with the level cap and not getting these updates to the challenges. All right. Greetings from Sunny Israel. Greetings from Sunny and hot Texas. It is so hot here. Hope you are doing well, my brother. And I hope you had a great Father's Day, guys. I am considering a few options with Dark Dimension 5 Cosmic Section. Probably use Kestrel and Eternals, but don't know which two to add. So, honestly... With Kestrel and Eternals, you're gonna get through it. And figure, figuring out the rest of your Cosmic team is just a matter of balancing cost and usage. So Starlord and uh, Starlord and Chala and Stitcher are solid, cheap options. I don't really use them very often. So in in the case of Stitcher, I think he's so cheap that if if you plan to use him on war offense with Starlord and Chala, or plan to use him in the tech section of the raids, he could be a very good option for you because he's gonna get that viability. I brought him up and thinking that I might use him in a tech section in a raids, not really. And I don't really use him, uh, actually I use him on war offense team because he is part of the Ravager team, but uh, he doesn't make a huge difference on that team. It's all of our Star Wars, T'Challa and Yondu for me, but uh, they're cheap. You don't use them very often. Considering taking Bishop because I use him in the raids and save him for also save for Heartless Strange, which I use on Arena. So I would recommend Heartless Strange, Star Wars, T'Challa. I use him on, there's one particular one that boss known in a tech section of Doom Raids that I use him on. And he makes a big difference on other than that the other tech nodes not really that great because of the squishiness and i'm using him all the time in these new trashy gambit raids i got that dirty club section so silver surfer and t'challa the two main characters for me but um yeah these gambit raids are going to be over i wouldn't recommend upgrading a character just for these gambit raids considering their limited time use but i would really like to hear your opinion or any other suggestions so i like heartless strange better than bishop because he's an arena character he just came into the arena meta so he's going to be involved in the arena meta for a while bishop i feel is kind of an outdated team for the mutant section they they're probably the best uh, team right now for the mutant section in doom but they feel outdated some of my characters even at uh almost max level get one shot and well i guess not an almost max level with this new level cap increase to level 90 but uh, a lot of their stuff is was previously maxed out and very very hard so i would i would recommend heartless strange over a uh, bishop but a lot of these dark dimension recommendations can be based on your usage of these characters i always recommend characters taking into dark dimension characters that you're going to use afterwards because eventually no matter how hard dark dimension is and uh, the some of the no's on dark dimension 4 may be exceptions the double iron fist or the double miss marble but outside of that even with bad characters, you should eventually get through uh, Dark Dimension because you're not going to just take bad characters. You're taking some good characters with you as well. So I think of a lot of it is picking characters that you're going to give you value, not just in Dark Dimension, but outside of Dark Dimension. So I, I'm looking at arena characters. I'm looking at characters that I use in a Doom Raids. And those are my primary characters that I'm taking up. And then once in a while, I will take a character like Stitcher up because they're so cheap. So uh, a lot of this is based on the luck that you've gotten with some of your pulls of the teal gear as well. If you get a lot of mutant gear, uh, Bishop can be a good suggestion. But uh, remember, Omega Red is one of the best uh, legendary characters in the game. So I would definitely recommend taking him into the legendary section. And Jubilee is also very good. Bishop is not as good without Jubilee. Jubilee's not as good without Bishop. Uh, so take that into account. You want to make sure you have enough mutant gear, but those aren't bad sex, uh, uh, suggestions. But just, I would recommend taking in a character that you're using outside of Dark Dimension. Don't just focus on building up characters for their value in Dark Dimension because once that mode, you're done with it two times, there's no real need to go back unless you want some cool border around your avatar. All right, Valley Flying. I recently came back to the game after a two-year break. Starting to struggle in raids with my old team. Agony recommendations who to build for a mid-game player. The Lions I joined is doing Doom 7.4 and, and wants to start trying Doom. So... I would start focusing on your Doom teams right now. I know you guys are in Ultima 7 and you could use whatever characters you want, 
but especially if you eventually are going to get into doom or are looking to do that very soon i start to build up the doom teams and the best doom teams you got as far and i'm going i'm on the far left so i'm going to do this in order you got the web warriors the bio section the web warriors are the best team now if you have symbiotes you can still get through the uh the bio section and the doom raids but you know you probably don't want to invest a lot into that team at this point so the web warriors are the way to go for bio uh i would recommend building up any bio character or any of those web warriors that you have you know maybe it's going to be hard to get scarlet spider because that's who it looks like is the character that they want to be very rare and are going to limit the shards for us for scarlet spider but outside of that uh you got peter parker spider-man you got miles that's going to be farmable we had ghost spider that should be farmable we got a data mine that she's farmable and we got to mention that she's gonna be farmable down the road as well and spider punk they seem to be giving his shards out all the time so the web wars are great for the bio section moving on to skill you got your secret avengers with kestrel and i like i like shang chi and most of those nodes the second node in skill i use zemo to ability block that silver surfer for, for most of the nodes you're going to be using captain sam sharon maria kestrel and then shang chi very very good team in the skill section there those are the characters that i would recommend from the skill section now tech is kind of a problem there's not a good tech team there's good tech characters but you're gonna have to uh build up a few different characters as some backup options now your solid character is going to be doom lady deathstrike and kestrel those are the ones that are going to really main you the nodes and then you got other characters like we mentioned starlord t'challa stitcher it's okay Gamora, I mean, uh, not Gamora, Nebula is okay. And if you've already previously built her, maybe you came back, uh, maybe maybe you already started building them before the uh, rework to Infinity Watch. That That's a decent option. I wouldn't build up Nebula at this point, but back when the Infinity Watch was a thing, that was a good character to build up. Uh, Ghost is a character that I don't see a lot of people using, but she helps me a lot. She has that big ultimate, drains all the energy, or drains all the health. And then she's got her basic, which removes turn meter as well. So those are good options in the tech section. Doc Ock is kind of there. Uh, if you're building up legendaries anyway, he's, he's there. And I used to use him before we got some of these updated characters. But uh, with some of the newer characters, I think he's kind of lost his value there. And obviously, the legendary Shuri, she has that defense up right in the beginning. Gives that ability, energy, heals. So those are some tech characters that you could start to build for, ultima, uh, for the Ultimus raids. Moving on from tech to mystic. And the best mystic characters are the Eternals and then the new warriors. So death... Uh, Lady Deathpool, we have um, Cloak and Dagger and Cersei and Icarus. Now, Mystic, you got a lot of other characters that you could use in there as well, but I think that's the best five team combo. But Morgan Le Fay, Silver Surfer, Adam Warlock, you got Doom also with that Mystic tag. So you got a lot of good backup options as well, but I would focus mainly, if you can, unlock them, Eternals and the New Warriors. And then for Mutants, Axemen, they're the best uh, raid team right now. So, yeah, like I said, they're kind of an older team. They don't seem like they are designed to fully beat the Doom. I mean, I can't do it on auto. There's some times that I still get one-shotted, even though I built up those characters to the previous max level. Uh, it's, 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 it's a rough note, but I would recommend starting with those. Focus on characters you're going to use later in Doom. Hopefully, you can still build some of these teams. I know some of these teams, if you didn't get that, some of these characters that launched, it'd be very tough to get. But uh, hopefully, you are able to get that, my brother. But those that's what I recommend. Focusing on the future and then building towards the current. Same thing like with Dark Dimension. Looking at what you're going to do in the future with these characters and then building the characters that you're going to use right now based on what you could also use in the future. All right. I know it's a long answer. Hope that helped, brother. All right. Valley, big fan. Congratulations on Baby Dormammu. He's such a Baby Dormammu, and uh, he's, he's pretty good. He's, he's okay. So my question, what will it take to make Ultron viable again, short of a rework? Unlocking six and seven red star blue, blue ISO five. Scopely is never giving him a team, but I still do have a lot of love for him, despite the power creep. We'd love to see him find more utility and come off the bench one day. So would I. He was one of the best characters in the game for a long time. Kind of stopped that with Black Bolt and uh, his passive ability that if he kills a character not really not going to be able to bring them back to life there's a lot of other characters that have uh, had that now uh added to their kits kestrel has that under ultimate a few other characters that i that have that ability to non-revive so just with that skill added to the game that that made him lose a lot of value 
Other thing, if you get a very early ability to block on him and he, and his cooldowns get off, well, he's not really going to do much in the matchup unless you have somebody else in there with the ability energy. So characters like Surfer with the early ability block, Zemo with a very early ability block will screw up that Ultron. So I think for him to have value again, he's going to need to get a full rework. Uh, a lot of it is based on his bots and with that 10 character limit on the field at a time then uh you know if you bring another character like doom or someone you're kind of mixing spots with the ultron bots and the doom bots so i think i think ultron definitely needs some love as far as a rework i know my brother heartgrave put a lot of the red stars on him and at one point was very happy but i have not heard him mention ultron in a long time so i don't even know if the six or seven red stars will do it i think he needs a full rework to be viable but let me know your thoughts on ultron and the comments all right next question valley thanks for asking my question last week thanks for leaving a question last week my brother i was just wondering why did the pride inferno event end in the blog post it said it's run till the 15th of the month as i'm writing on the 14th so it did say that it still does say that in the blog post but what was made aware to me last week and i did not notice this before i guess in a random comment on discord cerebral made a comment that there was an error that was supposed to end on the 14th not the 15th i think he did it the same day as that blog post went up but that was not made public on reddit that was not made public on twitter so with discord a lot of these messages get lost lost in there so i was not aware that he said that but it's still scummy what it looks like is that they were trying to time the event ending so the pride inferno event ended on tuesday normally with updates they tend to drop on tuesdays and if we look at when the end in game mail for the update coming was received in our inbox it was on a tuesday and normally in a normal update cycle it is a week from we get that message that update is coming in our inbox to when the update actually goes live so all signs pointed this update dropping on tuesday Unfortunately, the update dropped on Wednesday, and that screwed up a lot of the stuff, you know, the raid timing of these Gambit raids that screwed up uh, this, these, uh, um, these Pride Inferno milestones that screwed up a lot of things. The alpha raids ending and not having a new raid pop up at that time, you know, there's a lot that screwed up. I think, a, I think the simple explanation is supposed to end on the, four, uh, on the 14th. They screwed that up, wrote the 15th anyway and uh, the update ended up dropping on the 15th. So probably should have ended on the 15th instead of being changed. But I think they wrote it wrong and then they changed it or or they corrected it to end on the 14th and the update was late. So it, it, they, they should have just left it there. Anyway, that's, that's what I think happened. Let's move on. Hey, Valley, greetings from Singapore. Greetings back from Texas, my brother. Do you know what happened to the Silver Surfer note? It was mentioned in the blog post. Doom campaign will be gaining the influence of Power, Cos uh, power Cosmic on June 14th, 5 p.m. with the rival Silver Surfer to Doom 1-9, but I do not seem to know it at the moment. To decide to not to make Silver Surfer farm balls promise, and this is exactly what I think happened to the Pride Inferno milestones. The update was supposed to be released yesterday, and if we look at the date of this, this was on Wednesday. So it's supposed to be released on Tuesday, they changed it to 12 Pacific today, which is Wednesday. The change is with the update. So, yeah. And, and the the, the follow-up comment. Guess the update is still a fail. Them delaying it. So, what happened with the update? If you guys weren't around when this update dropped last week, it came up. And at server reset, the game went down. They put it into a long maintenance mode. And I think a lot of that was because the Gambit raids were launching. So, it was, it was, it was so bad that the devs didn't, not even the devs wanted this thing to launch. And as you guys are playing through these Gambit raids now, especially if you have the trashy club section like I do, uh, it's it's not not the most fun game mode. I do like the challenge though. I do like the challenge of these Gambit raids, but I don't like that the entire Alliance cannot miss one day, cannot miss one note, or it's gonna screw everything up. I don't like the limiting of this. I don't like that there's new currency for the gamut raids. I don't like, uh, there's a lot of things I don't like, but I do like the challenge and I got the clubs lanes. So I got the, the probably the most difficult challenge in terms of the worst teams in the gamut raids. And I kind of like it. I kind of like the challenge. I just don't like that it's tied to these milestones that are tied to these month long rolling rebel milestones. And it's so limiting as far as the shards there so yeah anyway got off topic there but yeah it's a lot of this was due to this update on all the fails in this update uh valley congrats on your amazon coin sponsor when did that start so it, we amazon coins was a sponsor of the channel for the majority of last year 
They took a pause, I, I believe it was the beginning of the year, and they just uh, brought it back last month with the past two character releases. So uh, yes, Amazon Coins, guys. It is it is where, I'll, where I make all of my purchases in Marvel Strike Force from. It's not available in all regions, but if you go coins.valleyflying.com, it'll take you to the page, give you all the explanation. And if it is available in your region and you wanna make a purchase on any game on the Amazon App Store, Marvel Strike Force or something else, uh, use that use the link and it'll get you some money off. So Amazon Coins, awesome. But yeah, it started this month, my brother. With Scourge coming up and building Young Avengers, I was wondering if Hulk wears boxers or brief definitely boxers if those are the only two options he needs he needs some freedom for the boys hulk doesn't look like he's a character that or, or yeah a character that would be limiting and uh the freedom so I, I think he wants more freedom and magic magic probably got it right definitely commando so that's that's probably the correct answer but if the, if it's limited to boxers or brief it's probably gonna be boxers my friend all right long question i'm gonna read this whole thing <laughs> All right, what up, Valley? Apologies ahead of time for the long post. I have a question about inflation in game as well as the new legendary events. So, yeah, as you know, inflation is hitting real life a lot. So, I'm wondering if that has to do with these price increases and uh, just the increase of a lot of stuff across the board in the game. But, all right, let's continue with the questions. Was uh, thinking about how many resources I've thrown at the new legendary events compared to the previous ones. 150k Pym Tech team unlocks a six star legendary and Young Avengers is only the part of the process getting a four star legendary. Yes, uh, they've done that, that they've done it like that on purpose. They've added all these scourges, it's difficulty. But I think the good thing about these scourge events is if, if it was just a standard event and either the dark, dark, the dark hunters or the web warriors were required for the next legendary, I would only have, a, or required in a standard legendary format. Well, I would only have a five star, five gold star Morgan Le Fay, but with this new legendary scourges, I actually got a six star. So yes, it is more expensive because there's a leaderboard attached to it and you're competing with other players. But uh, if you are willing to grind and willing to sit through some bad RNG, you can get a higher star unlock than some previous legendary events. So it's good and bad. I think it's a double-edged sword, but it's designed to make us use our whole roster. I don't know if you've noticed 2022, but there's a lot of characters that uh, need some love and they've updated some characters. They've given some reworks. So not only are you upgrading new characters at this point, some of these older characters that you probably never would have wanted to go back back in uh, upgrade while well, they've gotten reworks and now some of them are important. So it's, it's not just the scourge events that that uh, is increasing inflation. They're, they're, they are very, uh, they're designing it on purpose that we have to upgrade multiple characters, not just the new character in the game. Obviously pretty different circumstances, but these new legendary events are requiring so much more resources. It's almost impossible to keep up at this point with them reworking and releasing characters a lot more this year. Yeah, exactly, exactly like I said, yeah. A lot more characters and rework characters as well. I mean, we've gotten the Asgardian this update. We've gotten uh, many other teams that have been upgraded recently. The Marauders, uh, the un the normal X Men. I mean, there's uh, there's a bunch of them. Uh, there's probably a bunch that I'm missing as well. But yeah, with a lot of characters. Oh, the Ravagers. Talking about uh, Ravager Stitcher and Yondu. So a lot of characters go back and upgrade them. But even the Web Warriors had to go back and upgrade Miles and upgrade normal Peter Parker Spider Man because they had very little value for so long. So they're they're doing that on purpose they want us to upgrade every characters they've taken small steps for them uh keeping towards with uh, wait they have taken small steps towards keeping up with all the new requirements but do you think we'll see any concrete steps make sure that we have the resource to keep up with all this uh it'll be dependent if they're going to upgrade these challenges especially with this new level cap increase level 90 increase and we didn't even get new challenges for level 85 so this does not feel good does not feel good i like it that uh I've through this year we've been locked into building up scourge team scourge requirements maybe oh I just feel like not like I feel like through this year we have been <laughs> locked into building up scourge teams scourge requirements and maybe one to two meta teams across all the patches I've been able to explore all of my passion projects uh, I haven't been able to score all my passion projects and it's sucking the fun out of the game should I hold for some hope or hope for some change I I, I mean the devs of repeatedly said they release things in a state that's probably a little more limiting than it should be but 
they are they'd rather do it that way and then make it a little more friendly instead of making it too friendly and then having to scale back on things so i think they're just stingy but if the community complains enough about things then they usually react and yeah this is this is this is a thing that i'm noticing as well but at the end of the day this is a resource resource management game how well can you manage your gold and your training mats and all your gear and all that other stuff uh, i just think we need more more resource for all that short and sweet to the point of being a long time watcher it is is what they're gonna do or can care about my inbox rewards at 20 30 not collected and had two to six days left i already contacted them uh yeah so i had i had a similar situation it was only with one not 20 to 30 my goodness you were hoarding for a while my friend uh that's some discipline i gotta congratulate you for that alone hopefully you get a good customer service person you know some of them will just give you the stuff if you complain a much uh, enough with 20 to 30 rewards though I, I would have trouble keeping track of all of them so i hope you got some screenshots but yeah it is it's pretty scummy that happened to one of my rewards i had to go back and forth with them a lot before i got uh, the rewards back and uh even the first time they gave me the rewards i'm like that's not what i was supposed to get so i think a lot of the things with the customer servers you got to get lucky and get a good one i i know that's not in anybody's control but you know, sometimes I've gotten some really good responses and other times I've had to go back and forth for over a week. So hopefully you can you can still contact them. Hopefully they haven't closed out your ticket. I know some of the customer service does that a bunch and it's annoying, but yeah, best of luck, my brother. Hopefully they can fix it. Uh, hopefully they keep records of all that stuff. Hey, Valley, long time watcher. Hope you had a great Father's Day weekend. And based on this goes live, I'm posting this Friday. Hey, hope you all had a great Father's Day weekend as well. Whether whether you're a dad and celebrated with your family or whether you're not a dad and celebrated with your own dad. So hopefully you had a great one. And yeah, hopefully it was a great weekend, brothers. All right, uh, and sisters, all that. Hopefully it was a great weekend for everybody. So my question is, how are you feeling about Scopely? I say this because in the past you mentioned some things they do or force not feeling good. Yeah, these like these Gambit raids, they don't feel good. Case in point, Friday blog, try to say they infuse more gold in the game in anticipation at a level cap increase. The truth of the matter, they've been behind on the resource infusion in relation to the cap increases. They, they, they have for a while, yes, they've been very behind with this. Level 85, we got no new challenges, no new gold challenges, training mat challenges, catalyst challenges, which is why we're in the state we're in feeling like they're so behind with everything. Yes. It is a resource management game, but we're behind on all this stuff. Let's go, um, yeah, trying to pull the wool over the community and make us forget that they've created this resource crunch by not giving us a line with a level 85 cap increase. We play the game because we like things, but not being feel, not being made to feel cheated or misled like a child is not amongst these reasons. Sorry, the post got longer than expected, but Scopely has me raging. So gotta remember, it's just a game. It's just a game at some point. So, um, and they're still in my opinion they're still fun to be had in this game i really like crucible uh other than their limiting rewards i kind of like the the novelty and the challenge of the gambit raids but the the way the reward structure is with these milestones having to rely on all of your alliance mates to not uh not not uh have a life not not give any time off and making sure that they do all those notes having to rely on every single person all 24 members of the alliance one person screws up it screws up the whole line that's that's the worst part but there's there's some things i like let's take a look at this blog post though because this this was trash they said uh, archangel the new community manager on reddit said oh we have more information coming but all this is trash this does not count this was done in the past all this gold increases some of them weren't even mentioned in blog posts or announced publicly we just noticed that stuff so that was crap and even more rewards coming the more uh, following weeks more gold in the gold rush challenge so updating one of the challenges for level I guess this is a level 85 increase since we never got that. But what about the 90s? What about our catalyst? What about everything else? Increased training uh, material rewards for certain campaign nodes. That is, that is so trashy. This is all they're going to do. And uh, oh, yes. Every time you get a new level from 86 to 90, you're getting all this stuff. But that is a one-time thing. That is just trash. So none of this counts. Uh, increasing more gold. How much more gold? And then certain campaign nodes. Increasing training material. This is absolutely tone deaf this is actually crap and i hope they they realize how bad this is this is this is such trash this is such crap man scopely get out of your own way and uh 
and start to play this game and know the the crunch that the players are feeling but yeah they, they're way far behind on this and it doesn't feel good especially with all the character releases like we thought what we mentioned this year a huge amount of characters release and reworks in addition to all those so uh yeah i agree with you my brother hopefully they will do something and hopefully the community manager especially the new community manager archangel can communicate with the devs because i'd really heard from the former community manager zeeks the, de the community managers know a lot of devs know about the bugs the community managers know what the community wants but when all of that's presented to the money people the sum of times it's like yeah we don't care let's just put it out like this so hopefully they actually listen hopefully the community managers are listened to hopefully the devs that test the bugs are listened to and uh, we get a better product but I don't know. History is not on our side here. Why is it when they make a mistake, they don't respond? I have a screenshot of my response. Multiple complaints send in uh, rewards two to six days I never collected and they're gone. They can't even give a response. Like I said, I did the previous question. Sometimes you get a good customer service uh, representative and they give you what you need, what you're out of and make you whole. Other times, not. So yeah, I'm not sure if you can close a ticket and open a new one and hopefully you get a good person. Hopefully you don't get Brian though, but hopefully you get a good one and give your stuff. Uh, and hopefully they have records of what you were missing because that, that, that's a lot that you uh, missed out on my friend. All right, hey Valley, what's the best way of getting K3 materials uh, without the U7 raids? I'm currently in a level 85 alliance and I'm 74. They do two tomb, uh, doom two and one raid. Should I stay or leave? I'm out of K3 materials. So, uh, K3, I'm, I'm guessing that you're meaning the the T3 ability materials. If we go to these orbs here, uh, and not the L3 training modules as well, I, I believe you mean these training orbs here. Now, if we go in here and look at look at these training modules, longer time players have no issue with these as all as at all. Uh, have over 11,000, 111,000 of these. And that was because the Ultimus raids ran for so long. We didn't need this stuff. We kept getting this stuff for years and years and years and not really used. So longer time players have an abundance because we stayed in Ultimus for so long. That's a problem that some of the newer players or have or the mid game players where the Alliance gets to Doom a lot quicker and you don't get these rewards. So uh, first thing, uh, this was something I didn't notice. Uh, is these T3 ability orbs. Make sure you go and open them. I have over 115,000 or 115,000. I got some of these other orbs. Make sure you go in your inventory and you're opening these. Uh, and honestly, I don't know where these are all got because like like you can see, I don't really open these. So uh, I, I'm wondering if the best solution is to drop down and get some Ultimus raids or, do, or go to a alliance that does these Ultimus raids every so often. Um, and then going back to the Doom so you get your teal gear and stuff like that. Uh, if you guys have, if you guys are running through this problem, and I think this is more for mid game and newer players that are running into this problem because you're so quick out of Ultimus that uh, you're not getting this stuff. Let me know, let me know some solutions that have helped you because this is uh, not something that I can speak on firsthand, but I know it is a problem for a lot of players. All right, hey Valley, love the content brother. Just checking with these Gambit Rays. Oh, they're such trash. They're such trash, my brother. Did they take this away because they realized how difficult it was to reach? Can't imagine Scopely giving us a break on that. Do you have any idea what's going on? So this is actually described in the blog post. So if we go back to the blog post here, talking about the Ace of Raids event, and this was from June 10th. If we scroll down to the Ace of Raids uh, description here, the first run will reward a Gambit character charge, Disco Balls, Mutant Gear, T4, four ability materials, gold orbs, and more. So if we look at that, this is the first run here. This is all disco balls. Even at milestone 18 here, it's just these disco balls here. Now, what it also said, while well, the second run, and these are two seven day runs, so it's 14 days total, first seven days, second seven days. We're in the first seven days of these Gambit milestones right now. And when the second one comes, the second run will include all these rewards alongside the Dazzler Glimmer Bracelet earning you 10,000 milestone points for Roland Rebel. So if we go to the second day rewards, this is for week two, as you can see. Uh, here's where the Glimmer Bracelet is right there. So uh, I know it's a little confusing. I don't know why they have to make these events so confusing, but I think that might be their marketing strategy. Confuse the heck out of players, hopefully get them to spend some in-game resources. And uh, that's that's what I think. I don't know what the actual answer is, but I think I think they're making it confusing on purpose, my brother. All right, hey, uh, Valley, hope your day is going well. You as well, my brother. Love the positive coming from you at all times. Even the topic is has definitely opposite of positive. Yeah, like this trashy gamut rate. <laughs> I mean, we the list could go on. It's go and uh, Marvel Strike Force, but 
try to be positive. This is a game. You know, even 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 when the devs make bad decisions, I think there's still fun to be had. So I try I try to do that. What do you think there's gonna be given Iron Man a costume? He has so many different armors, not a single costume for him. Kind of strange, don't you think it is? Now they did give him a new character animation that we saw in the beginning of the video, but as far as a new costume. I don't know, they, they seem to give it on irrelevant characters, right? They gave it on Elektra when she would go into stealth, Invisible Woman when she was on no team and would go into stealth, Luke Cage on defense, so... I, Iron Man seems perfect for him. I think a lot of the times they try to tie these into new characters, or rework characters, or things that have to do with the MCU or Disney Plus shows, so... I don't know, if we, if we, if we are seeing Iron Man soon, I think uh, that's a high possibility, or if... The speculation on him getting a rework as part of a tech solution to Doom, if that does come true, I think uh, there is possibility of us seeing a costume. But until there's going to be something tied in with MCU or a rework or a new character that uh, is fitting on the team, I don't think we're going to get too many costumes for characters. Obviously, there there's some changes, though. Uh, I mean, there's exceptions, but that's that's my opinion. Hi, uh, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you, my friend. I have a question. Who would you recommend now for Dark Dimension 3? So kind of, kind of the same line of thinking I want you to think about with these other dark dimensions think about the future so dark dimension 3 is where you're at now eventually you're going to be in dark dimension 4 eventually you're going to be in dark dimension 5 so with these limited resources i would start to focus on characters that you're either using all the time or characters that you're going to be bringing into dark dimension 4 and dark dimension 5 so uh, i mentioned some of the good raid characters out there but as far as the different sections uh, there's certain characters that work really well now who i brought into this uh these game modes let's go take a look at each of the sections here and we have a few different ones so the first one let's talk about is let's talk about city that's the first one in many of these that you have to bring in and uh, previous the city section was last in dark dimension three and four so probably work on these after but squirrel girl she has some double value now that she is a scourge character and a legendary requirement character and got the rework for that dark dimension so she's a good city character shang chi i think is one of the best city characters in the game right now you got your web warriors that you're probably going to use in the raids uh I, if you have the the oz formula and all their gear, I would not hesitate in bringing them up. Uh, Cloak and Dagger are also very good in the Doom Raids as well, in the in the Mystic section. I brought up Cloak, I did not bring up Dagger. You got some argument for maybe Spider-Woman or some of the uh, other A-Force characters. I think Spider-Woman is the best of the bunch. And then you have Morbius as well for City. So those are some recommendations for City. Those are gonna work good in Dark Dimension 5. So that's, if I was starting over, that's who I'd bring up for Dark Dimension 4. All right, next, let's talk about the global section of each of these nodes. And there's a lot of great characters there. Uh, once you unlock Doom in Dark Dimension 4, I would try to bring him up. But Lady Deathstrike is obviously a very good character. Captain Sam, the rest of the so, uh, Secret Avengers, very, very good as well. Sabretooth is cheap and he did get a rework. And in Dark Dimension 4, before his rework, I would say he was very bad. But now since he's got his rework, in Dark Dimension 5, he's actually made kind of a difference. All right, we got more Secret Avengers here. Beast is also a good character, but he takes mutant gear, and there might be some other mutants that you want to bring up. Zemo, I brought him into Dark Dimension 4 and was very good there, but at the time, I was using him in Arena. I was using him in the skill section of the Doom Raids, so he had other value there. I don't know if I would bring him up nowadays, but I still do use him a lot in many different teams. Sharon Carter, obviously very good. Agatha, if you're building up that Dark Hole team, very good. You got other mutants as well. Emma, Sinister, that are also very good. But those, those are I recommend. Oh, and if you got Wong, I'll bring up Wong. Wong looks like he's going to be hard to take, um, get the character shards for. All right, let's go to Cosmic. Another section here that uh, you've got a lot of good options here. And if you got some of these characters, I would build them up for the Dark Dimension. All right, Kestrel, obviously a very good character. Dark Dimension 3, 4, 5. She's going to be good in all of those. If you have the shards for the Eternals, Cersei and Icarus are a duo that are very, very good. And if you're bringing up Cersei, Icarus, and Kestrel, uh, the second and third, especially for Dark Dimension 3 and 4, probably don't matter too much. Uh, like I said in uh, one of the previous questions, I did bring up Stitcher and T'Challa. Doctor Strange Heartless is another good choice there. Uh, previously, I might have done some of the Infinity Watch or the Black Order, but yeah, nowadays, not 
not mad at you. So uh, any of these cosmic characters that you're using nowadays a lot, I would bring them up. Uh, the Asgardians just got a rework. They may be good in Dark Dimension. And if you plan to use them after Dark Dimension, that's another choice. And last but not least, Legendary. We've got a good lot of good Legendaries. Like I said in a previous question, I think the best Legendary or one of the best Legendaries right now is Omega Red. Obviously, the Scourge Legendary. Morgan Le Fay is going to be good. Rogue is going to be good when she comes in a game. But I like Shuri. Not only is she a valuable member of my tech do doom raid team but she is very very good as far as the sustain in dark dimension uh five as well i, I haven't brought her dark dimension five yet but i am bringing her for my second run she was a beast in dark dimension four uh invisible woman is very good for the dark dimensions but i have zero use outside of that for her but uh if you have all that bio gear and you want to build her up uh, that that will be one way to go not my recommended way to go but that is one way to go jubilee still has a lot of value and that's the two big mutant gear pieces i brought a phoenix just because i had the mutants laying well i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it uh she's gonna give you some a decent amount of damage every single day but you know when she dies you're gonna have to re uh, recharge her ebony maw thing's falling out ak is falling out so and then black bolt he he does not do a lot in dark dimension but because i was being one for other game modes and because he is part of that rogue scourge team uh, i brought him up but yeah in dark dimension does not really do too much so that's who i'd recommend for dark dimension 3 because those are the characters that i recommend for dark dimension 5 right now my brother all right hey brother hope all is well question what do you think will happen to the four horsemen teams like dark hold and unlimited once apocalypse in a game dark hold and unlimited will lose their legendary member for the four horsemen so what i think is happening i think we're getting uh dark hold is obviously the arena team the unlimited is a crucible team i think we're gonna get other teams a raid team maybe another team and then on those respected game modes those characters will be very very good on their respective teams but there may be a new game mode or maybe the new arena team when apocalypse comes out which will include the four horsemen plus apocalypse that's what i think is going to happen when he comes out but uh it is just a guess we don't know at this point all right last but not least let's go take a look at these blue stacks now we're at, we were having a lot of lag a lot of trouble earlier today and we went into the settings and did some of the things that Reminex recommended so uh first thing performance this was all the way at 60 we brought our frame rate down to 30 and that helped the other thing that we did was with the either the graphics or the preferences yes the graphics right here this was on software decoding and we changed the hardware decoding work fine some people actually turned the decoding off but those are the settings i would play around with these uh decoding and then the frame rate those are the two things that i did and we have an older version of blue stacks here and it still managed to work i think the current version of 5.8 uh i have 5.3 so i have a little older version of that and just changing those settings helped me and that is it guys hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully it helps you with some of your picks in uh, some of these dark dimensions understanding where i think the game is going and helping you with some of the resources let me know what you think of iron man is it just the animation that they did or is this a clue that he's getting a rework i'm kind of undecided at this point so i want to hear from you guys hopefully you have a great rest of your day if you enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and give it a thumbs up so youtube knows that you enjoy this video uh i will see you guys next time give me a hulk fist bump before you go check me out on twitter have a great rest of your day hulk fist bump valley flying out oh yeah baby